fundamental perspective, what a lot of analysts are are kind of kind of settling on as to why gold has chosen now to break out. I, I you know, I think it's more simple than that. Yeah, you, know, you go back to the first of March. Okay, so uh, you know we, we came out of February. Prices, you know, had kind of struggled, or at least it bounced back from January. But on Friday, the first of March was the breakout day, where gold was up about ten dollars. And then uh, Goon Waller, I call him Goons, the Fed Governor Waller came out and gave a speech and said, here's where I'd like to see policy go moving forward. I'd like us to shift from owning longer term to shorter term to bid down the short end of the bond uh, yield curve. That would probably positively tilt the the, uh, yield curve and and then that's when a recession typically starts. In the realm of financial markets, few assets command as much attention and fascination as gold and silver. These precious metals have long been regarded as safe havens during times of economic uncertainty and geopolitical tension. Understanding the intricate dynamics that drive their prices requires insight, analysis, and a keen eye for market trends. In a recent video by Craig Hemk, a seasoned expert in the financial sector, he delves deep into the current state of the gold and silver markets With his wealth of experience and astute observations, Hemp provides valuable insights that can help investors navigate these volatile yet potentially lucrative markets. Hemp begins his analysis by reflecting on the recent performance of gold. He notes that the metal has reached a critical juncture, hovering around the $2.30 mark a level that Hemp identifies as a logical stopping point for a breather in its rally. Despite encountering some resistance at this level, gold's ascent has been driven by a confluence of factors, including geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and shifting monetary policies. One key event that sparked gold's recent surge was a speech by Fed Governor Waller in early March. Waller's comments hinted at potential shifts in monetary policy, sending gold prices soaring by $1.30 in a single day. This breakout marked the beginning of a sustained upward trend culminating in record highs for gold across daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly periods. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more expert insights and analysis. Let's get right into the latest interview with Craig Hemp as he gives us his gold and silver prices prediction. It's, it's funny, it's played out just like what we thought it would. In some respects, it's a little later than usual. I thought we might get there late last year and then it's a little earlier than usual because then after we didn't get there last year, I thought, well, it might be more like summer or fall this year. So we're right in the middle. But yeah, it has played out. Um, my thought has always been I, in my all my years of in uh, the financial sector, usually something makes an all time high. You overshoot by about 10 percent. Not exactly 10, but you get a rush of headlines, a rush of momentum. You know, people looking at something for the first time. Look at that. It's going up. So we got to we got to buy some. So my goal was always 2300. As it turns out, that's kind of a technical level uh, for the rally as well. And that's why gold's kind of run into kind of a little bit of resistance there. Now, see what happens next. Um, As we record this here on uh, Thursday, there's a lot of geopolitical stuff that is bubbling under the surface in the Middle East. And we've seen oil trade. Well, usually lately doesn't trade very, very volatilely, volatilely. because so much of that trade now is dominated by computers. But even that has gotten volatile today as it becomes increasingly likely that Iran is going to respond to Egypt hitting their embassy. Again, they, they almost have to. I mean, I'm going off topic for a second, but you know, your embassy is your sovereign territory. So it's one thing when Trump wipes out that Soleimani guy on the road to the Damascus airport. It's another thing entirely to wipe out some guys in the embassy. That's like he might as well have reached into Iran and killed them. So this is coming. Gold is reflecting that uh, back to its highs of the day as we record this about three o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday. So um, anyway, getting back to the original point about 2300, this is a logical stopping point um, for gold to catch its breath a little bit, but it may not. I mean, it may just charge on through. The most important thing, Elijah, for people under, you know, to take away, so this is, they haven't like missed the boat. I mean, I could throw all kinds of transportation metaphors out. They haven't missed the boat. The train hasn't left the station. The horses aren't out of the barn. Um, if we're right about, you know, what's really driving all of this, then really we're just getting started. From a 
fundamental perspective, what a lot of analysts are are kind of kind of settling on as to why gold has chosen now to break out. I, I you know, I think it's more simple than that. Yeah, you, know, you go back to the first of March. Okay, so uh, you know we we came out of February, prices you know had kind of struggled, or at least had bounced back from January. But on Friday, the first of March was the breakout day, where gold was up about ten dollars. And then uh, Goon Waller, I call him Goons, the Fed Governor Waller came out and gave a speech and said, here's where I'd like to see policy go moving forward. I'd like us to shift from owning longer term to shorter term to bid down the short end of the bond uh, yield curve. That would probably positively tilt the the uh, yield curve and, cause, and, then, and that's when a recession typically starts. But then he also intimated that once we do that, then we've got room to start QE again. Everybody went, whoa, hey, just, wait a second. And gold shot up $30 on his comments that day to finish up 40 and began that month and ended the 1st of March with the highest weekly close that it ever posted. And what happened? You came in next week. Everybody noticed that. And gold tacked on another $97 that first full trading week of March on this clear breakout because everybody noticed. What's interesting now is the trading week ended uh, last Thursday because the markets were closed for Good Friday. So you had uh, the weekend, the month end, and the quarter end last Thursday. And gold finished with what I call a superfecta, the you know, horse racing term, you know, where you get first through fourth. That day, Thursday last week, gold finished at its all time daily high, all time weekly high, all time monthly high, and all time quarterly high. So if you're going to generate some momentum, you, know, you first you get this break out of the trading range a month ago. Now you end the month and the quarter at these all-time highs. This is where you know the home offices, the hedge funds, the institutions all go, wow, something's going on here. I got to be a part of it. And so the thing kind of builds on itself. And that's what has happened so far. We can kind of maybe relate this into silver, which hasn't even broken out of its trading range yet, uh, which again is why I consider and say that about you know, the whole thing about the horses in the barn. I always... Uh, like to draw, especially on longer term, more uh, horizontal, rectangular resistance areas and support areas. Um, and to me, it, 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 again, it's pretty clear what silver needs to do. Uh, where gold, I just mentioned how gold had broken out um, at the end of February and every, wow, look at this, uh, all time, you know, new weekly highs and all that kind of stuff. And you had this big rush of momentum and excitement the following week. Silver hasn't done nothing of the sort. In fact, silver hasn't even posted a weekly close above 26 for over two years. Hemk emphasizes that gold's momentum is not solely driven by speculative fervor, but is rooted in fundamental factors. He underscores the significance of geopolitical developments and monetary policy shifts in driving investor interest in gold as a safe haven asset. While gold has captured headlines with its record-breaking performance, silver has yet to fully break out of its trading range. Hemp points out that silver has struggled to surpass the $1.26 mark for over two years, a crucial milestone that needs to be achieved for a sustained rally to occur. Despite silver's slower pace, Hemp remains optimistic about its prospects. He outlines a roadmap for silver's potential breakout, highlighting the importance of surpassing key resistance levels, such as $1.26 and $1.28. Once silver establishes a foothold above these levels, it could experience a surge akin to gold's recent trajectory. And so you got to at least get that done, and we may get that done this week, provided we make it through tomorrow, okay? But the top of gold's or silver's breakout is actually 28. It needs to break out and close a week above 28 before it starts moving into the territory that gold now occupies on a clear breakout. So um, it will probably close above 26. That's the first step. And then we'll probably bang around. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll just fly through 28 next week and woo, that'd be great. But once we get above 28, then silver starts getting a life of its own the way gold has for the last several weeks. Start getting a three handle in, on your silver again for the first time since, you know, whatever, 2012. And that's going to generate its own level of, of excitement. I'll remind everybody, and this is typically how it goes. Um, I would extend this answer for a second, Elijah. The only other time I'd seen a superfecta in gold was on December 31st of 2010. And it finished at all those, even an annual high. 
Okay, on the, at the end, at, and then, so then what happened? Gold finished that year at 1420, and by early September, put in that old all-time high of 1920. So what's that? A 20 some odd percent move, right? Well, as while that was taking place, silver began 2011 at 18. And by everybody probably recalls by the 1st of May, it was 48. So it can go fast. I mean, it's not unprecedented to see it happen. Um, but that, and again, this is important for people that think that, oh, I've already missed out. You know, silver's up $2 in the last four days or whatever it is. Silver's got to get above 28 and then pick up a three before you really start getting into the fireworks, and we're not there yet. Hemp draws parallels to past market dynamics, citing examples from 2010 and 2011 when gold and silver experienced rapid price appreciation. He emphasizes that while short-term fluctuations are inevitable, the overall trend for precious metals remains bullish. Hemp offers valuable insights into navigating the inherent volatility of precious metals markets. He cautions against succumbing to the allure of exaggerated price predictions, noting that sustainable gains are typically achieved through a series of upward movements followed by brief corrections. Hemp's analysis serves as a reminder that patience and a long-term perspective are essential for success in the gold and silver markets. While price fluctuations may occur, the underlying fundamentals of these metals as safe haven assets remain robust. Uh, anytime you get into a longer term or even just a shorter term bull market, you know, where you've got an extended run up in prices under this pricing scheme, where the price you're seeing is primarily derived through the trading of, you know, derivatives, futures contracts, you get this rush of speculative money that comes in and open interest expands and everybody's buying the contracts and the price goes up. Well, eventually you get to a point where all that buying gets exhausted. At least temporarily and price begins to roll over some of the late comers go hey i'm going to ring the register on this and they start selling those longs that they just bought the week before or the day before or whatever and you get a correction and a pullback and that money washes that back out and then you stabilize but the trend is still up and then you charge forward again that's just how it works i mean we call it the you know a wash and rinse cycle if you will two steps forward one step back and I, I just can't imagine that it's, it's not going to continue that way. I mean, we could wake up Monday, right? And all of a sudden China says, hey, we are a buyer of gold at $5,000 an ounce. And then all of a sudden we go to $5,000 an ounce. Um, more likely, at least given how it's always gone in the past, this to the moon stuff is not how it works. Okay, we're not going to 3000 by the 4th of July. You know, we're not going to... $100 silver, you know, all these things that people have been banding about now that there's some interest in the metals again. You go up, you'll consolidate, you'll pull back, move up higher, come back down, move up higher. That's typically how it works. So silver now it's above 26, probably touch 28, kind of pull back, and then we'll see if it can generate enough fresh momentum to blast through there.